Hey, what's up? Before we get started today, I just wanna take this as an opportunity to thank everybody who supported this channel through coffee. If you're unfamiliar, the link is down below. It's a great way to help us out with groceries on the channel and overall just support what we're doing. So thank you guys so much. Let's get to the video. So this dish was born on a really special night for me. It's one of those occasions where you get together with friends that you don't see very often. Everyone's just in the right mood the whole night. There's jokes going on constantly. The food is delicious. The wine is beautiful and simple. And for me, the cooking that I did that night was just special. I only used what I had in the house and the dish I ended up creating was perfect for the occasion. It was humble, delicious, salty and crunchy all you know it was just everything that i really love about food and to get to share that with some really close friends when everyone's in the sweet spot was really special for me so i'm really excited to break it down for you guys if that sounds like fun let's get started I don't have a lot of top secret moves when it comes to making stuff delicious, but the ones that I do have are usually add anchovy and garlic and add breadcrumbs. And this dish uses both of those moves. And on top of that, we're gonna be using another top secret move, which is add pasta and then um, cheese. Woo! So to get started, grab one pound of broccolini. We use broccolini over regular brock here, mainly because it unifies with the spaghetti better texturally, and it doesn't crumble and mush like regular spaghetti when it's cooked hard. To cut this broccolini, we're gonna line them up facing the same direction and remove the florette end. After that, I'm gonna run my knife through the stems, cutting these into about one quarter inch chunks. If you see any bigger florets, just tear those down or give them another chop. We definitely wanna avoid giant chunks of crunchy veg in the finished dish. At this point, we've got the one pound of nice broccolini chopped. We're gonna set that aside, and I'm gonna grab 10 to 12 cloves of peeled garlic. All I'm doing here is giving them a rustic slice. We're not going super thin because burnt garlic is definitely not something I wanna mess with. And in a second, we're gonna be frying this garlic and having it sliced thicker is gonna give us some cover. Once we've got that, we'll set it aside and grab three tins of anchovies. I know, three cans of anchovies seems like a lot, but we are making what I call anchovy sofrito. This is a variation on the Spanish style sofrito, which is normally aromatic vegetables cooked in a lot of olive oil. And if you look up the translation, I think it means under the fry. So we're gonna be slowly frying anchovies, garlic, chili flake in a lot of olive oil. But by the time it's cooked down, we add pasta water, pecorino, butter. That saltiness and funkiness from the anchovies is gonna break down, become a lot more mellow, and just create a really delicious umami sauce for our pasta. So to break these down, we're gonna pop open the tins and but well, we're gonna try to open them. We're gonna rip open this tin. Try not to slice your hand, let's do this. Pull it back. Okay, I'm gonna scoop out three cans of anchovies through this little tiny opening and drain all of the oil out. We're gonna thoroughly rinse these anchovies under cold water to remove the excess salt. And at this point, we're gonna come back to the board and give everything a good chop. We wanna break all this down pretty far. So we're gonna run our knife through things five or six times. When we do this, we're gonna have something that's gonna easily melt away into the background of our sofrito. So to make this sofrito, we're gonna head over to the stove and heat a large saute pan over medium heat. Into that pan, we're gonna add 100 grams of olive oil and let that come up gently over medium heat. Once that's heated up, we're gonna add in 75 grams of sliced garlic, all three tins of our rinsed and chopped anchovies, which ends up being about 75 grams. Once that's gently seasoning, we're gonna add in five grams of chili flakes. If you're sensitive to heat, add less chili flakes. This can get a little bit spicy, and depending on the type of chili flakes you have, that heat can vary widely. After about four minutes, the anchovies are gonna be melted into the background, and the garlic is just starting to get tender. We're gonna fry this up for another 30 seconds or so and then set it aside in a wide bottom dish so that it cools down quickly. If you let this stay too hot for too long, it's gonna carry over and it's gonna turn into fried garlic sofrito. That can be a good thing, but not for us, not for this dish. So while that's cooling, we're gonna wipe out our saute pan and flip it up over to high heat. While that pan's getting hot, we're gonna add in about a quarter cup of olive oil. We're gonna let that heat for a second and then we're gonna add in about three quarters cup of panko breadcrumbs. If you're not familiar, this is a Japanese style breadcrumb that has a much bigger particle size and makes for a superior crunch. The regular American grocery store breadcrumbs are good for filler, for stuff like meatloaves, but they're not great for crunch in my opinion. Let's just say this, I'm not making a schnitzel 
with regular breadcrumbs. Keep an eye on these because they're gonna fry up fast and they're gonna carry over pretty hard. We're gonna stir this up constantly to make sure that there's no hot spots and that things are getting fried up evenly. After about 60 seconds over medium high heat, the crumbs should have turned a nice medium golden brown. And at that point, we're gonna flip this out onto a well-lined sheet tray with a ton of paper towel. To get these breadcrumbs fried properly, we used a lot of oil, but now we need the paper towel to help draw some of that oil out. These are looking good. We're gonna set them aside and we're gonna wipe out the pan and return it to high heat. Once things are hot again, we're gonna hit the pan with a dose of olive oil, maybe about a tablespoon, and in goes my chopped broccolini. At that point, I'm gonna hit it with a strong pinch of salt. By the way, this is the 14 inch pan I recommended in the shrimp curry video, and I still cannot highly recommend it enough. They're like 60 bucks online. I'll definitely link to one down below. It just makes such quick work of prep. This broccoli is gonna take about four to six minutes to get tender. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna grab a six ounce block of pecorino. In this case, the store only had pecorino romano, which is slightly less piquant and sharp than straight up Italian stuff, but it still tastes great and it's plenty good for our purposes. So grab your box grater and on the finest side, this one, we're gonna grate this into cheese dust. We definitely want the fine grated stuff because we definitely need this to melt into the pasta water later on. Anything large and chunky is gonna get mealy and kind of grainy when we put it on heat. I'm gonna grate this whole piece of cheese, but we probably only need about four ounces of it. I like to grate more than I need because having grated cheese around isn't a bad thing. And I wanna be generous later on. I wanna put a bunch on top and I don't wanna be short. Once that's grated, we're gonna scoop it up, set it aside, and we're gonna check back on our broccoli. It's been about four minutes and things are looking good. All we're trying to do here is to get things tender and get a little bit of roasty color on the outside. When you're there, scoop it out, set it aside, and at this point, we've got everything we need prepped out. Now, we're gonna make the final dish. I'm gonna move this saute pan over to the easy burner and put four quarts of water on my strongest burner and bring that to a hard boil. Once we're at a boil, we're gonna hit the water with just a small pinch of salt. This is a lot less than I would normally use, but we've got really salty anchovies and we've got salty cheese for garnish later on. So as a hedge to protect ourselves from salty food later, the water only gets a sprinkle. Before we boil the pasta, let's talk about what I'm using today. This is the nice, artisan line of Barilla spaghetti. If you check the label, it's 100% Durham semolina, which is what I normally recommend for nice pasta. This was three bucks at my local grocery store and I really liked it, but standard DiCecco or Barilla can work here as well. I'm gonna throw this pasta into the pot and we're gonna boil that per package instructions, which is about eight to nine minutes. I'm only boiling one four ounce portion here because Lauren's gluten-free and she's getting her own special spaghetti water. By the way, the Barilla gluten-free pasta is some of the best stuff I've found on the market. It's really good, eats like spaghetti. I'm not sponsored, but Barilla, if you're out there, here's my email, you're cool. If you wanna party, hit me up, dude. While our pasta's boiling, we're gonna heat up our saute pan over medium high heat and add in about a half cup of pasta water. Again, this is just one portion, by the way. I'm also gonna add in about a quarter of my sofrito and a quarter of my broccoli. I'm gonna bring all this up to a simmer, let it get to know each other, let that sofrito kind of get dissolved in the water. At that point, we're gonna taste the pasta, make sure it's cooked, and we're gonna flip that into the pan. At this point, we're gonna finesse this thing into a sauce. Start by tossing the pasta vigorously to get a little bit of that starch released from the noodle. All that starch is gonna be the binder that keeps all this fat and cheese emulsified in the water. So tossing it a bunch or stirring it a bunch is the best way to start. I'm gonna add a little bit more pasta water, maybe about a quarter cup, and give it another toss, toss, toss. At this point, take a look. It should be looking wet and a little bit starchy, and at this point, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of room temperature butter. I'm gonna give it another toss, 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 so we can get this butter emulsified with the water. At this point, the sauce in the pan should be opaque instead of broken and oily. If it's looking broken, we can add another splash or two of water, toss, 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 and that should lock things back in. Once we've got the pasta sitting in a nice anchovy butter saucy thing, we're gonna take it off heat and we're gonna add a strong dose of pecorino, probably about two to three tablespoons. I'm gonna let that sit for just a second. Again, this is off heat. Once that cheese has just started to melt, we're gonna give it a toss, toss, toss to combine. That cheese is gonna slowly and gently melt into that loose anchovy butter sauce we made a second ago. At this point, I'm gonna give things a taste. In the end, I think mine could have been slightly more saucy here. All I would have taken was just another splash or two of pasta water. The spaghetti can really absorb a lot of liquid, so just keep that in mind. But I'm tasting it and it tastes really dope. We're gonna be garnishing this with a ton of breadcrumbs and a ton of pecorino as a reminder, so grab those, grab a bowl, let's plate this thing.
there we go, a really delicious, craveable anchovy pasta. And for me, it's just a snapshot in time. It reminds me of a really special night with really close friends where for a few hours, everything was just right. The mood was there, the jokes were hilarious, and the wine was delicious. And I hope this video inspires you to give it a try. Another quick shout out to everybody who supported this channel by buying us a coffee. It goes a long way in helping us get groceries or pay for some of the services that go into supporting this channel. As always guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around and we'll see you next time.